Hello, my name is Dr. Christopher Flanagan, and I'm one of the creators of a practical guide to managing paediatric problems in the postnatal wards. In this video, I'm going to provide you with a demonstration of our application. So I'm just going to open up the application on the iPhone. This is the home screen, and as you can see, our application is made up of three parts. There's an ebook, an audiovisual section, and a calculator section. So let's start with the ebook. First chapter is on the newborn check. This chapter outlines the important points to cover when doing a newborn discharge examination. Anywhere you see something blue underlined means that there's an internal link to a related section of the application. So if I click on the word murmur, we're taken to the heart murmur section. When you're finished looking at the internal link, just click the back arrow to take yourself back to your original place in the application. At the bottom of this chapter, we have included web links to sources of further reading, guidelines, or related pictures. In this chapter, we have included links to the Auckland City Hospital guidelines. So I'll just open this up for you. So we'll say you're looking for more information on hypospadias. You can open up and view their guideline on your iPhone. One of the nice things about all IDDCS apps is that all the web links open within an internal browser so you don't need to go outside the application to use Safari. This means that when you finish looking at the web link, you can just click cancel and you're taken back to your original place in the application. If you're looking for pictures on the common newborn abnormalities, the Stanford School of Medicine Newborn Nursery Photo Gallery is a really useful source. I'll just open it up here and let you have a look at it. Here you'll find pictures of all the common newborn abnormalities. So we'll say we were looking for a picture of Herb's palsy. Another nice feature about our internal browser is to maximize the, the viewing screen, we have removed the address bar. If you want to um, find the web address, just click the info button. And then again, when you're done, click cancel and you're right back to your current place in the application. The next section I want to show you is the examination abnormalities. So if I open up the chapter on sacral dimples, there's two ways to browse through the chapters. You can either scroll through the text or to move quickly to the desired section, just click on the links in the toolbar at the bottom. So click B to move to the background, H to move to the history and examination section, M to move to the management section, R to move to the references, and L to move to the web links. The final section of the ebook is on clinical problems. And one of the sections that really demonstrates the benefit of having a built in web browser is the BCG vaccination set chapter. So you can see here that it's recommended that infants whose parents or grandparents were born in a high risk country. That is a country where the incidence of TB is greater than 40 per 100,000. 
should have the BCG vaccination. And you can actually check this at the Health Protection Agency's website. So we just click on the web link, and it's number one. So the HPA website provides you with a list of all the countries' incidence of TB. And you can see here, if the incidence is greater than 40 per 100,000, the baby should have the BCG vaccination. And again, just click Cancel, and you're right back to where you left the application. So if we go back to the home screen, the next section I want to show you is the audio visual section. Here we have a video by an experienced neonatologist demonstrating how to perform a newborn check. For consent reasons, we're only able to show the video footage within the application. We also have a number of audio presentations and common newborn problems. So I'll open the jaundice one up for you. The assessment of jaundice and decision making with regards babies with jaundice takes place many times on every shift in the postnatal ward and on a daily basis for healthcare workers seeing babies in the community after discharge. Up to 50% of term and 80% of preterm babies will be affected. The last section I want to show you is the calculator section. So the first calculator we have a weight converter. volume converter the gestational age calculator is particularly useful when plotting a baby on a growth chart so the first thing to do is enter the date of birth And the baby's actual age is displayed. If the baby was born preterm, enter the gestational age at birth. There's a feeding requirements calculator. You just need to enter the baby's day of life. and the baby's weight. And the feeding requirements are displayed. The phototherapy calculator. So the first thing you need to do is fill in the baby's age and hours at the time the blood sample was taken. The next thing you need to do is enter the Billy Rubin results. If you use milligrams per deciliter, go ahead and enter it in the box. If your lab uses micromoles per liter, you need to change the bilirubin units in the settings menu. Okay, so the next thing to do is to enter the gestational age of the baby and whether or not any risk factors for jaundice are present. If you can't remember the risk factors for jaundice, just click on the I button to display them. So you can see that the calculator has worked out the baby's risk for jaundice is low and um, despite this the baby will require phototherapy. Probably what's more useful is to actually view the plotted bilirubin on the American Academy of Pediatrics normogram and this calculator will do this for you by clicking the view graph button. So here you can see the calculator has clearly marked the low risk line on the graph and that as the plotted bilirubin is above this line the baby will require phototherapy. and the Abgur score calculator.